All right, so I have some uh, compacting to do around the yard, and I was looking into renting a vibrating plate compactor. And of course, this led to me, you know, looking it up on Google and seeing exactly how it works. And they're really simple machines, actually. So I think I'm just going to try and build one myself. Uh, I'm going to make an electric unit because uh, the good thing about electric is you put it away for you, you plug it in, and it still works, as opposed to gas, where you have to clean the carb and screw around. So. Uh, I acquired this uh, Baldor three, uh, three quarter horse single phase electric motor. Uh, I got this for free actually, someone was throwing it out. Just needed a little bit of wiring and uh, it's good to go. And then I also got a pulley and a belt. So the motor is going to drive this jack shaft. And the way these things work is basically there's a jack shaft with a, a counterweight on it. And because it's out of balance as that shaft spins, that's what causes the plate to vibrate. So uh, basically I got to get all this stuff mounted to a plate uh, that's got some pretty decent girth to it. Uh, most of these units are weighing around in around the 180 pounds, 200 pound kind of thing. So I'm going to shoot for that. Uh, should be a pretty easy build but we'll see how it goes. Alright, so this is the base frame. I've got it all clamped up. Uh, lots of clamps here. But this is getting this all square because this frame has to bolt to the bottom plate and I want to make sure that the bottom of it's flat. So that's why there's all these clamps here. Uh, you can never have too much clamps, that's for sure. Next step was to drill some holes. Uh, I have four big holes drilled here. That's where I'm going to mount my pillow block for my uh, balance shaft. And then I put in four holes here with studs, which I'm going to rubber mount with some bushings. I'm going to rubber mount a plate on here, and that's what the motor is going to mount to. So it's going to be rubber isolated from the frame. And then also the handle is going to attach to that plate. Uh, this is 3 8 stainless bolts, and uh, this stuff is 7 16 so it's pretty beefy. Everything's going to be red Loctited and lock washer. I've made the plate that uh, is going to mount the electric motor will mount to, and also my handle will mount to this for holding on to the machine. I've also bolted down the shaft here, and I've installed these rubber bushings and just pieces of air hose I cut here as spacers so this plate is actually going to sit on top of these studs and I'll get it down over top of these bushings and then I'll bolt rubber to the top side too so it'll be rubber isolated. It's just going to give a little bit of vibration dampening for the motor. I don't know how much I really believe in that whether it's necessary or not but I'm going to go with it. So this is kind of showing the basic shape of the machine. I have everything uh, rough bolted in, kind of just to show where it's going to be and make sure it fits. I did change the pulley size on this motor. Uh, because this motor spins at around 1700 RPM, and I want my shaft here spinning probably around 3500, somewhere in that neighborhood, I put a pulley that's about twice the size as this one on here. And that's going to speed this up. Because most packers that you see, uh, that you buy and rent, says the frequency of about 3700, somewhere in that range. I assume that's the same as revolutions of the shaft, so that's what I'm going for. But uh, I give you an idea of what goes on here. So as the motor spins, I've got a little counterweight on here. Now I'm probably going to have to add more, but that's what's going to give you vibrating action. With the motor off, I'm down to the bare frame again here. And I've secured my plate that's going to be the compacting plate to the bottom here. It's 3 16 plate. And I know that's a little thin compared to most compactors. But what I'm going to do is 
along the inside of this frame I'm going to run quarter by three quarter that I had some left over ribs maybe space them every two inches or even closer than that all the way along the inside I'm going to weld that to the plate as well so that's going to give a lot of strength to the middle of this I'll do that all the way along and then I'll probably try and roll the edges of the plate up yet but gives you an idea of what it's going to look like I'll go ahead and weld that now see all the ribs welded in here now so that's supporting the plate across the middle I think that's probably adequate uh, even if the plate did bend a little bit I don't think it's going to be the end of the world as far as packing is concerned uh, the next thing I did here was I took the plasma cutter and I gouged not all the way through but most of the way through the plate here and bent up the edges it's gonna give me the ramp that I need to when I'm pushing the packer back and forth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld these up and then I'm gonna also make little triangle reinforcement pieces to support the front edge. And then also I'm gonna make triangular supports on the side edge. All in all, I'd say I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. So you can see I've got the reinforcements on the edges here. I've also thrown a side reinforcing piece in here, which I may brace across here, but I'm not sure that I'm going to need to. And also you can see my middle braces all uh, put in. And I got my angle on the front and the back. So uh, I'm going to give this baby a coat of paint. And then... Uh, I can start putting it back together and making some guards and the handle and uh, doing some packing, I guess. Here is the completed guard. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it does the job. I mean, if you're an idiot and you stick your finger in there, yeah, you're still gonna get your finger chopped off, but it protects it from at least a rock going in there and then getting spit out into your face or something like that. Uh, look at the back side of it here. So it's just made from pieces of pipe and tin, just all stitched together. Fairly heavy stuff. It mounts in three places, all to the base plate, the vibrating plate. I hope that wasn't a mistake, but mounting it to the motor, I figured it'd just be flopping around from what I can tell what the motor does when it's running. So, Anyways, I'll give this a coat of paint and move on. So I decided to go with a nice red for the guard. It really goes nice with the black and silver of the motor, you know. Kind of a racing, uh, racing compactor type thing. Uh, looking nice. And then I just got to do a handle. So the way I'm going to do this is I've got these old uh, used sway bar bushings that I saved off a car of some sort. And I cut some pieces of pipe here. So I'm going to slice the pipe and have it crush on these sway bar bushings. And this fits inside there. So I'll be able to rubber mount there and then have my handle coming off of this solid bar here. And I'll have it so the handle swivels up and down.
that's about it. I'm all done. I uh, finished off the handle. It's actually made out of conduit and some other pieces of scrap I had. Uh, put some rubber handles on it and I just used a household switch here for the on and off. Just welded a box right in there. It's not waterproof or anything. It is all grounded to the handle and the motor and everything. So, And this is rubber insulated, so whatever. I don't uh, see myself using it in the rain or anything like that, but anyways, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'll, uh, one other thing I had to do is, uh, some packers say reversible, and I kind of thought, well, reversible, it just vibrates, but it actually does go in a certain direction depending on which way the motor spins, so I had to reverse the motor just to get it to go that way, so this would be just a one-way packer, but uh, I'll give you some closer looks at it here. outside right now so I have no test run I'll just do a little pass by on the garage floor here hopefully it doesn't break anything <laughs> 